بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حد أبلغ مجمع البحرين حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما بلغ مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما We'll say something now about Dajjal. No one has said before me. This is new to the world. Dajjal sees with the left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one-eyed. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafir. And uh, Every mu'min would be able to read kafir, whether he is katib or ghayru katib, he is literate or illiterate. We do not have the time to explain and interpret, excuse me, and so I have to cut short. When Dajjal sees with his left eye, it symbolizes external sight. And so knowledge that is externally acquired, like scientific knowledge. And when Dajjal is blind in his right eye, it symbolizes internal blindness and Allah speaks about that internal blindness and uh, it will be good for our politicians to listen to this he says Allah says about some people لهم قلوب لا يفقهون بها ولهم أعين لا يبصرون بها ولهم آذان لا يسمعون بها. They have eyes and yet they do not see. They have ears and yet they do not hear. They have hearts and yet they do not understand. أولئك كالأنعام. They are just like cattle. Those who are internally blind. And he says something more. He says, Man kana fi hazihi a'ama. Fa huwa fil akhirati a'ama. Wa adalla sabil. If you are blind in this world, you will be blind in the next world as well. And even more misguided. And so, Dajjal is internally blind. And he wants all of mankind to become like him. People who see with only one eye. 
if he can transform us all into people who are internally blind, then we will see the road to heaven. And we will say, this is the road to heaven. And we will go down that road and he will take us to hell. And if we are internally blind, we will see the road to hell. He shows us the road to hell. No, 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 I don't want to go on that road, not me. But that's the road to heaven. <laughs> so we pay a terrible price if we cannot penetrate beyond the external form to reach the internal substance. And Allah chooses one people to send the message to them in particular. While the message is sent to Mombasa as well. But the message is sent in particular to a people who say, we are the chosen of the Lord God. We are born superior to the rest of mankind. We are the elite of the world. We are the intellectual elite of mankind. Look at all the Nobel Prizes. Our people win them. <laughs> and they look down upon us and upon the rest of mankind. And they say heaven is reserved for us. So Allah sends a message to them. But he uses their Nabi to send the message to them. Let me repeat that. Allah uses the Nabi, Nabi Musa Islam, to send a message to them. So Nabi Musa alayhi salam and Banu Israel are in Sinai. And they are traveling around in Sinai. And they stop sometimes and they have a mobile masjid. They take it with them wherever they go. And so they have their, their religious prayers wherever they stop. And uh, Musa alayhi salam delivers a khutbah. And one of the men came to him and said, Oh Musa, what a fine khutbah. You must be the most learned of all men. Remember, that's what they say. That is what they say. Remember that. So he said, yes, I am the most learned of men. Because that is what they say. Then Allah says, no. You are not the most learned. There's one more learned than you, and that is the message being conveyed to them. That in Akhiru Zaman, there'll be servants of Allah more learned than you, Washington. So watch it. So Musa Islam says, I would like to meet him. And that is the advice being given to Banu Israel. You better go and seek the people who are more learned than you. So Allah says you will meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. You will meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. The most learned of all men in Akhiru Zaman will be found at Majma'ul Bahrain. Not in the Darul Ulum, not in Jamiatul Azhar. No, you will find the most learned of all men at Majma'ul Bahrain. And uh, in the Hadith, we are told we don't know his name, but we know that he is called Khidr. And Khidr 
from color is green. So, so how did he get this name, green? The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala answered that question. He said that he came to a land which was barren, nothing growing. And when he sat down in that land, everything came out green. So that's how he got the name green khidr, meaning the knowledge that comes from this scholar is not mechanical knowledge. It's not like the knowledge that comes from a factory that is repeated over and over and over again. No. The knowledge that comes from him is like raindrops which fall from the sky and they bring the dead heart back to life. They revive people. They revive a town. They revive a city. They revive the world. This is not ordinary knowledge. This is knowledge that puts a flame in your heart and changes your life. That's the man. So he's not the ordinary scholar of Islam. <laughs> no. That is the scholar of Akhir zaman If you find such a man, follow him. So you will find him where? You'll find him at Majma'ul Bahrain.